Hello everyone. Good af eh? Good afternoon. Maria Banga here. Uh, Maria Banga, founder of the association Hope for the Abuse and the Battered. Maria Banga, mental health advocate. Maria Banga, mental health user herself. Yeah, well, hmm. sometimes, you know, we go through stuff. And uh, <clears throat> this morning, you know, I came back from Yaoundé yesterday. I'd spent like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I came back on Thursday. Yeah, so five days in Yaoundé. And it was a full program. And then, well, I kind of forgot a little bit that um, I have to be working, like catching up on my emails and that I have <clears throat> a presentation to do tomorrow somewhere. And um, yes, that Monday I have to start capacity building with my team. Um, well, I just thought that, well, I can handle that, especially as I have a team and everybody has stuff to do. Everybody knows what to do. But my brain doesn't really pick up all of those things sometimes. And so when I just came back yesterday, even before, yeah, I think when I left yesterday, I started right inside the bus, like, catch up, catch up, catch up. So I started in the bus, did my assignment, blah, blah, blah. blah. So I could not sleep. I went to feeling like my eyes were, you know, sometimes when you know you all sleep, but inside your eyes are ticking. And then I was just like, oh, look at all the things that you have to do. Blah, blah, blah. The, the list was drawing up in my head. Long, long, long list. And so I came back. I, I was trying to set up the room, pack everything. But I have, I used to have this obsessive compulsive tendencies. I still really manage myself well. But at times when it just takes me up and I'm like, if everything is not in its place over and over and all of those kind of things, and you can imagine how restless you can become when you are trying to do all of that. And at the same time, you are noticing something somewhere which is not like where you wanted it to be. And then maybe there's something somebody did which is not exactly... In short, you are fighting the urge not to blow up. At the same time, the temperature is, is, is increasing inside you. And then you feel tired, but you don't, you don't know how to lie down and sleep. And then you, you also have to be there in the parlor with the family all of those things and then well i just got angry at some chat and everything and i was like show that phone but you know i, I wasn't going to show the phone because i have to kind of restrain myself that is self-control that is what i teach people so in the whole process i tried to sleep early i think by 9 30 i was sleeping but 2 30 a.m in short i was sleeping what i would call REM sleep because there was a time when I could remember what I was thinking about, although I was supposedly sleeping. 2.30, I lay up. You know you this presentation tomorrow, this present. You know your emails, you know your school assignment, you know, you know, you know. I tried to put on the computer. Huh, I just saw one or two emails and I was like, no, this email should not be like this. Look at the mistake. And then you're trying to, first of all, you know, sometimes people work late. So, well, when I start seeing emails or WhatsApps that relate to work after 8 p.m., in short, anything even, sometimes I get worked up, I get nervous. I'm like, what's the pressure, fire, everything. So, in all of that, I was really dizzy. And I did not have enough time to, to talk to my brother, to talk to people in the house and everything. I just wanted us to pray. So, I go and just lie down. And so, well, when I got up in the morning already with that, fragile mind you know like getting worked up i just saw these emails again and everything the first ones i was like no i took I, one thing i tried to do to calm myself down is to be polite in an email to put some spaces to take my time to write and read and stuff like that that way i'll not blow up i'm not going to use crappy language and those kind of things and then um so, well, the kids had to go to school, and for some reason, the uh, what that Gabi's money had gone left or right, and this and that. And then, oh, the temperature was already climbing inside me again. And then, well, as I was about to go into my room, I realized that my brother is up, and that's not the usual hour and everything. So, I was like, what is going on, Lord? And so, well, we spoke, and then, well, we had to come to the hospital, and then, well, I had already told my team I'm not feeling good because I'd already started writing with some little anger. When I start writing to people like, you're supposed to know this or don't ask me or 
stop the crap or some kind of language. I myself know that something is coming up, you know, or stuff like that. And, and because of that, I can also tell when some other person is struggling because maybe I know what it means to struggle, you know, so I could understand his struggle and we could talk about it and we are honest to each other and all of that. And then, well, <clears throat> we came to the hospital and then because I had to go and check out the, the hall while I'll be doing the presentation tomorrow. And I know that one thing, it is a bit conflicting. You need to rest. But at the same time, if you lie down, the temptation may be to just stay you there in your bed. And when you stay there, you may also isolate yourself more. Frankly speaking, this morning, I didn't want to talk on the phone. A friend was calling me, I know, to check on me, but I didn't want to pick up the call. I didn't want to pick up anybody's call. You know, for me, writing is the most I can do. Talking is a bit too stressful. And then you may have to start explaining something you don't think somebody can really understand. You know, sometimes, even when somebody has physical illness, I don't even know why we separate those things. But sometimes when your head is aching too much, somebody is calling you to ask you, oh, wait, it happened, blah, blah, blah. How, you, you don't want to start explaining. Or somebody comes to see you, you're in the hospital, you have cancer or diabetes or something. Then they start asking you what happened or what were you eating? Or, or they start, what were you thinking about? Those kind of things, you know. If it's a doctor, you know, yes, they're asking those questions to help you. But if it's just somebody, even if it's out of good faith, you're like, and then when I tell you all of that, what are you going to do to help me, you know? Or I don't even want to spend that energy talking to you about what's going on now. And I don't just want to talk. I don't want anybody to feel sorry for me, that kind of way. You know, like when people write, you can read it at any time. But when people call and they're saying like that, it's like, ah. Uh, at the same time, you don't want um, people to panic. At the same time, you write so that people should know that, well, you are going through stuff. You can go through stuff. But um, you're, going to, you're going to be okay. You cross, you cross that bridge, as we usually say. And the good thing about knowing um, what can trigger and what are the symptoms and what I can do to help myself is that, well, I, I end up helping myself. It could take some hours. It could take a day. It could take two. It could take three. But I'm really so grateful that I'm at this place right now. Um, one of the things I did was just keep going, you know, not don't let the feelings um, keep me grounded. You know, sometimes you feel, and the more you feel it and you, you, you pay attention to that feeling, the more it's like it's incapacitating you. The more it is like making you grounded, the more it's like making you even afraid, you know, to do something. I remember once in Brussels, I started feeling this way and I did not want to. I had to submit my thesis. I was about two or three weeks ahead of time. But the way I was nervous, I had to finish and submit that thing just so that my body could relax. I didn't want to go out of my room. You know, when it's winter, I was just there wrapped up in my bed. I don't even know what I bet for the three days. I was focused on that thing and all of that. You know, if it's like there's something ticking inside you. If you don't do it, it's not leaving you alone. So I was like, okay, just do step by step what you can do. The first thing was to go to a new and get the bill because the bill did not come again this month. And so I went, I got the bill. And I clap for myself, you got the bill. The next thing is um, go to Aqua and check the hall. And so I went to Aqua and I checked the hall and I clapped for myself. And the third thing was go to Bonaberry to Santa Lucia and buy some ice cream. And I went to Bonaberry and to Santa Lucia and I bought some ice cream. And get the flute for Gabi and I got the flute for Gabi. I even got two. So that when one gets broken, there is a reserve because... <laughs> I don't want me trouble. Those things I've looked for them even in Bobby. So I found two. I found it in Santa Lucia and I said, no, next time I'm coming to Santa Lucia, I'll just buy two. And so next thing, go to your cousins to do your hair. So I went to my cousins to do my hair. Bravo. Next thing, go to your mom to greet and to take the chat board. Went to my mom, greeted, took the chat board. Bravo. Next thing, come back to the house. I was already feeling much better. And then come to the hospital. And then, well, I mean, I didn't cook today. I didn't have that energy. So we've had bread for lunch. Fine. So um, we are going to figure out something for dinner. I just try to decompress like that sometimes. And I just told my girls, 
please just arrange this thing. I'm not, I don't want to check anything. Although I end up checking something though. But <laughs> I told them, please handle it and everything. And when I came back, they were home. It was, I mean, like they had their small meeting there and everything, everything. And the t-shirts are there and stuff. So I really am so grateful for such a dedicated team and um, all of that, you know. So when I celebrate them like that, it's not for for, for fun because uh, it's, I'm not joking. Because sometimes when you're going through, especially mental health challenges, you need to be surrounded by people who can understand and who can actually show you some, some love with, with or without talking to you. You know, uh, we, are, we are seeing a society where there's so much stigma. Um, if you know that somebody has a mental illness, uh, it looks like they become something else altogether. You don't treat them like um, if somebody had a, a, a diabetes or somebody's HIV positive or whatsoever. Um, so that is why I keep talking about it like this because I'm so passionate about it. Even before I had my own challenges and got my diagnosis in 2014 or before my brother even knew whatever was going on, I had just felt this compassion for people that I remember that when I was young in Dwala here in Daido, we were playing outside and then my friends started running and picking stones and shooting at somebody you call the mad person. I was like, why are you shooting him a stone? Ah, look at how he's dead. I say, and so leave him alone. You know, I, I can never forget that. So that's how I grew up. Like those were my friends, even in secondary school. There was one lady who used to come in front of the school and people be singing songs and making a mocking and she'd be running and stuff. And I was so pissed off. Like, why should people treat somebody like that? Do you know what this person has been through? Because I, I could not imagine that somebody was born that way. I mean, the other day I was at a friend's place. I saw a woman who has a baby. You know, she, she's working with a baby. You can tell that she's schizophrenic. She's talking and everything. And she has a baby and stuff like that. And people are talking and, well, now people don't look so much. And she went near a bar. And then the barman showed her where the crates were. And I was like, for heaven's sake. So I approached the the, 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 the way I greeted her. And I asked her what she wanted to drink. Because I know that she will not be going there if she doesn't want to drink. She said she would drink castor. I bought a bottle of castor for her. I mean, at that point, just let people be. You know? And I bought a bottle of water for her son. And she thanks me very much. That's the same thing I taught my children. One day we were in Bonaberry, opposite the house, there was one grandma you could tell. Of course, she had even removed her clothes and everything. The sun was shining. She was there talking. People were passing up and down. We sat there looking. After I said, no, let's go and ask grandma what she, if she's hungry or stuff like that. Hey, Gabi was so afraid. Well, we went, you know, and we got some water and some bread and you went gradually and he gave it to her and she was grateful. So that's how gradually I, I teach them, you know, and we don't quit them at home. I mean, it's it's been family from the very beginning. Like, what's there to be scared about? Seriously, what's there to be scared about? You know, some people like, oh, you know, the fear what? That's my brother. That's that's my own brother. If he was alive today, he would, he would be about that age. Am I going to show my brother out? Why wouldn't I show love to my brother? Why wouldn't I show love to another human being? I'm looking forward to spending the first anniversary of my association in the psychiatry world at Lakentini. I have to go and meet the director next week to see if it's possible and stuff like that. Just go and be with them. I've been there. I know what people go through. And yet a little love like that goes a long way. It really goes a long way. You know me today? Not only did I know how I can help myself, but some people commented, even just the Asia and the this and that, and then the want word on WhatsApp. All of those things, that is support. And so when we write like that, it's of course because we are counting on that kind of support. Even if it's just for one person, it's very important. So it doesn't need to be a crowd, you know, and stuff like that. And if nobody does, the writing is also therapeutic. It's like liberating. And then one of my sons sent me pictures, you know, taking during his show. And oh, they showed me laughing and just being me and everything. And it just kind of like melted my heart again and it was just so warm. And I was like, of course, what is there to panic about? You know, the office is not yet ready. And now we have to take our capacity building to, well, Nice Kitchen, which is even like 
nearness to raw material. At least we are sure of good food, right? <laughs> so, well, um, and of course, technicians, the guy was saying something today to the person, my friend who is taking care of the thing, that whether he went to buy the things and the things did what and the prices did what, I just thought I beg. I'm not in the mood to think about those kind of things. So they don't mention it to me, right? You, you should have, he should have run this thing through you before even engaging himself in it. So I don't want to hear nothing. If he has gone and exaggerated, that's his business. He should do what he wants to do. But that office should better be ready. If not, I'm not going to consider my occupancy as from the day that I paid for it. It's going to be as from the day that I move in. So any extra day is, is his problem, he and his mother's problem. That's the landlady. So um, we have to learn how to kind of like um, speak out, you know, like when I first asked my brother how he was feeling or what was happening, he was like, no, he's fine. But I knew that uh, he's not fine because, well, I can tell, you know, there are signs and signs. So uh, I just like, no, but you know, we are friends now. It's not today that we started and everything. And then we spoke. You know, and now we each feel better and uh, stuff like that. And uh, I'm looking forward to a brighter tomorrow. And um, yeah, he knows that he can beat this. We can beat this together. We are stronger. And um, it doesn't matter how many other people are with you. Like uh, just one, two, three people. That's good. And then your willpower is very important also. So I don't know if Gabi wants to say anything. Gabi? Do you want to say something? Uh, Mommy Bell is here. Oh, she's watching. You want to bring something in December? Eh? Eh, so come and say hello. Hello. What did you come to do in the hospital? I came to see Uncle Ikema. I, Uncle Ikema is your friend. He's my uncle. He's your uncle. You remember that first time when he came to the house? What did you say that you liked about Uncle Ikema? You remember that our first family meeting? What did you say? That uncle came, I help you to do what? Wash my clothes. Uh -huh. He made you feel good. He made you feel good, right? Mm -hmm. So we are just coming to be with Uncle Kema, but we know that he will get well, right? Yes. So what do you want Mommy Bell to bring for you? A shoe. Hey, Mommy Bell. Okay, well, we'll write to her and send you her size. Send you, send her your size, right? Okay, go and watch your nickel done. The light was off. No, don't put it off. Uncle Kemal, should put it off. No, is that, is that table that put it off? Oh. Who put it on? The table. He pushed ah, the table when he was standing here? Yes. We should leave it like that? We should be like that. Mm, okay. So how are you feeling now? I'm feeling much better. Wow, we thank God, right? So we'll just continue us like that now? Yes. You want to say hello to my friends? Sure. Okay. So this is Uncle E. Hello, Uncle E. How are you? I'm, I'm much better. You're much better? Yes. So what's special? What's different this time around? Well, the, dif the difference around this time around is just that I'm in a different different environment and I've taken the first the first doses, doses mm -hmm. of the drug. So I'm waiting for the second dose. I'm much, not really much better, but... The mind's the mind real worries. And what about the, the treatment here between the difference between here and Lacatini? Well the treatment here I've just started today. Uh huh. Yes, but Lacantini is different because you first be confined then before you be sent to the world. The first put you where? You'll be confined. Ah, in that place again, how do we call it? Call it the cabano. In the cabano, uh huh. Yes. Ah, and then the nurses there, how are they? Is it the same thing here? Well, the nurses here, I've just, I've, I've just met one, one nurse. Yeah, and even that one person? No, she's, she's calm and she's mm -hmm. good. And me, am I the same person? Yeah, yeah, the same person. <laughs> okay, so what do we tell our friends? Well, we tell how, how can they do to help somebody, you know, who's going through a crisis or stuff like that? Well, to help somebody who's going through a, through a crisis mm -hmm. is just to assist the person mm -hmm. and try to not not make, when the person feel not make the person to feel neglected mm -hmm. or or stigmatized and mm -hmm. just try to mm -hmm. make the person much better. Mm -hmm. Uncle Kema, I want to ask you one thing, right? Um, 
This morning when you woke up and you wore this your nice clothes like this, what did you want to do? Well, this morning I, I woke up mm -hmm. and and I, I I had I was agitated, so I just got up and I I brushed my mouth mm -hmm. and I sat down. Mm -hmm. I, I tried to write something. Mm -hmm. So I sat, but I was waiting. I was waiting for you to see mm -hmm. you. Yes, I, I wanted to go to Aqua to town ah. to see to see a friend. Ah, really? At, at Union Bank. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Ah, that's why you wore these nice clothes, right? They, they, no, I just yes. That's why I just I, I, I wore the dress. Ah, and this is the first time I'm seeing this on Quaker Mass clothes. So can you imagine? <laughs> he was wearing his nice clothes to go and see somebody. <laughs> okay, like what do we say? Last thing we say to them. Well, we we'll say to them hi. We we'll say hi. Some of them said you should get well soon and stuff like that. Some have been watching. I hope so. So we say thank you now. Yes, thank you. Okay, we really appreciate. Okay, well, everybody, you know, this hospital is also where I used to consult. And, well, you know, it's not so easy and I'm into so many other things. So I don't really come to consult again, but it's a special place for me. And then, um, you know, um, when people are still just at the beginning of their crisis, uh, you can go and see a GP. You don't need to go to a psychiatrist, you know, and stuff like that. Because some GPs already have... Um, they already know uh, what to do, what to prescribe and stuff like that because I don't prescribe medication, right? So um, I just do the talk therapy, cognitive behavioral therapy. So we did that and we will continue to do that. So I'm really hoping that today, tomorrow, Sunday, he will be out and um, we would have gotten it that way, you know. Um, it can happen like that. Oh, you can have a crisis and you don't go to the hospital like last time. Was it six months ago? The last time that you got a bit agitated was it six months ago? No, it was it was it was seven months ago. It was seven months ago. Yes. Okay, well, so you see, but you didn't go to hospital, remember? Yeah, you I just did. managed I it at home. Managed. So I think this time around is because I was not there to notice early because he said he has been feeling this way for like two weeks, right, Uncle Kema? Yes. Mm -hmm. So you see that it's also something that you kind of like you fight it a little bit inside you, but me the I, I can say the good thing is that I don't keep anything inside me to fight it. As soon as I notice the least symptom, the least trigger, I'm putting it out there. I'm beginning to fight. I'm like, quick, quick, quick. So, well, I just got a prescription for myself, for my colleague. I was like, if I need some anti-anxiety or anti-depression or something, you no, know, I was not depressed, but, you know, to calm down a little bit. But fortunately, I'm not going to get it right. So, that's how it is. It's, it's not like... Um, you need to go nuts and remove clothes and everything and walk on the street before people say, oh, yeah, well, you are mentally ill, so we can help you. No. Sometimes you just notice something. Somebody gets up when they're not used to getting up. Somebody sleeps too early or too late. Somebody doesn't bathe for two, three days. Somebody bathes too much. Somebody eats. Somebody doesn't eat. You need to know your person. And then, well, you will know that. Gabi, can you know what I volume a little bit? I'll be finishing soon. We don't have TV. So when my boy comes and sees TV like this, he's not going to leave that TV alone. <laughs> but I promised them a TV for Christmas. Okay, anyway. So that's what I was saying, that um, we need to know our person. And people can be triggered by anything. You know, trauma, violence, abuse, and, uh, you know, anything can trigger somebody. And when the brain has taken hits and hits and hits in life, Something small like this that will not trigger you is going to trigger that person. You know, like, you can say move to one person and they're looking at you are laughing and going. You say move to another person that's a big fight and a knife is going to come out. You say move to another person, the other person will also say move. You, it's, people behave differently. Our brains are wired differently, you know, and um, our environments are different. You just heard now where he is is different from where he was before. If you are somewhere where they would lock you up, that can even make you worse than if you're aware, well, we just like, okay, well, it's another experience, it's another crisis, it's another situation, it's going to pass, just like myself, I know. So, uh, if somebody's going to treat me differently because I'm not feeling too good today, or I was not feeling too good because I'm back to myself now, right? That's the person's problem. 
So we need to understand that when people go through mental health challenges or when people are mentally ill, it doesn't mean that there are lost cases and you have to lock them up, you have to chain them, you have to confine them and stuff like that. Sometimes people don't also want to speak up because they are afraid or they are worried about how you are going to react and if you are going to start to stigmatize them or you are going to you know, hold family meetings to decide on them without asking them. Okay, did we discuss about coming to the hospital together? Yes, we discussed. And I even told you different hospitals we could go to, right? Yes. And you're the one who chose, right? Yeah, you, yeah, you just mm. said we start. Yeah. yeah, so, you know, sometimes, especially when the person is still kind of like alert like that, it is good to involve them in the discussion. Even if there are some things they say which don't make sense to you, it doesn't matter. It is just good when the person feels like, well, my opinion counts, it's about me, yes, uh, I bet. I have to say something, or oh, they are asking me, and stuff like that. And For example, I did not know that Uncle Kema would want to talk to somebody on the phone. I thought he should need to sleep. But he himself took his phone and he, he called his brother and they spoke. So it's like, there are things when you, you don't also know everything, you know, but just let them feel free. So I didn't take the phone away from him to keep it like, no, you have to sleep. I was like, through it all, he also needs to process some of the things that have been popping up again and that have been getting getting him kind of like worked up. Just like me, myself, I have to process some of those things and realize that, well, the things I cannot change, I cannot change them. So it would be best to find solutions instead of focus on the things that are not working or the things that I've not yet done, you know, panicking over things. I'm not even sure about tomorrow, about the next hour. So why would I want to get into 2020 before 2020 is here? Those kind of things. And I don't think I'm the only person who has that kind of brain that beats around so much like that. And somebody once wrote on Facebook asking sleep if they were fighting. You know, stuff like, you want to sleep, but the sleep is not coming. And then when the sleep comes, quick, you are back up again, or you are turning around there in your sleep, <laughs> and stuff like that. So when I went to the saloon, I was able to sleep for like 20, 30 minutes, and, you know, sitting on the chair instead of lying on the bed. But sleep is sleep, so it's okay. It's okay, I mean... Let's stop being so scared of things we don't really know and stuff like that. And uh, instead, try to like, well, let's learn more about it. And if we go now on the computer, on the internet, Google, you'll get information about lots of things. I, I just respect Nora Brown. When she's in hospital, she's doing live videos. She's showing us what it is. All those tubes, when I look at it, I'm like, hey. But I mean, it, it makes it so real for me. Like, you see how on the red carpet and you see how everything i'm like glow girl you go through stuff so it's the same thing that, that's life and if that's your situation that's your situation not everybody's going to go through sickle cell or schizophrenia or post-traumatic stress disorder or bipolar disorder uh, or diabetes or cancer but well if you've gotten there what are you going to do stop living because you've gotten there no i know he's the same person i know once he comes out of this he's just going to pick up on where he stops so I'm not bothered about the things that you should have been doing today at home or wherever or what, uh, whether the house is up, is down. David didn't go to school today, so he was able to clean up and do those kind of things. And even if he doesn't, life is not going to end up because the house is upside down, you know. I've kind of like brought myself also to that, to admit that, that my house cannot be picky, pink clean like it used to be when either before I got married or when I just got married. So those kind of things help people. Um, like myself, you know, who have dealt with obsessive compulsive um, attitudes, actions, and a lot of trauma and, and all of those kind of things. So um, let me get going. I don't know what we are going to have for dinner today, but um, whatever, we are going to find something to have for dinner. And then I think that the training tomorrow, the presentation is going to be wonderful. We're going to do a video and um, share that with you after um, through youtube or something like that and i hear that there'll be some journalists whether it's from bbc or wherever so i had to do this nyanga you know and stuff like that and tell myself you know today is downtime against tomorrow so i'm happy all my girls have also made their nyangas and uh, you see us tomorrow in the morning you already see our pictures and then later on when we are there we are hoping to kind of have a nice time so um Thank you so much, everybody, for watching. I just like bringing these realities of um, my everyday life or all kinds of things that
come up, you know, and I'm so grateful that Uncle Kema is in such a good place to say, well, he doesn't mind talking to you people why in the hospital he he's happy that his, his story is able to raise the awareness that needs to be raised as far as mental health is concerned. And um, my boy Gabi just told you people, there's, he doesn't need, there's nothing about mental illness in my home. We don't care about that at all. We, we are like, that's okay. That's just part of life, right? Anybody can can go through anything and we don't stigmatize nobody. I mean, how are they going to do that? Starting from me? No. So that is it. Tomorrow, if they grow up, they meet somebody or it's a partner or it's anybody who's going through any mental health challenges or mental illness, well, they're going to support the person. They're going to show compassion. They're going to love the person through it. And that's just all what matters. And for me, it's more important this way. More important than faking that I'm strong, I'm this and that. When I'm strong, I'm strong. But when I'm weak, I'm weak. And then after I get back on my feet again. So, hmm, everybody, thank you so much. Today they say Vanjaji Swa. Well, my Vanjaji Swa is usually just sit, eat, um, pray with my guys and everything. Well, we'll have TV very soon at least. There will be some TV watching too. <laughs> okay, have a wonderful weekend. Thank you so much, everybody who joined. Don't hesitate to share, to raise the awareness and stuff like that. Take care of your own um, mental well-being too. It really matters. And then God bless us all.